we are going to go to our firewall and we're going to set up the hypervisor for MHT1. So I've got an RDP session set up to this. I've gone ahead and made sure the disks are provisioned. And I've got the ISO for Windows Server 2022 copying over. So on our HDD, we're going to provision some folders. And this is going to be where we store the files for Hyper-V. So I've got Windows features pulled up over here. And uh, Windows 10, this is Windows 10 machine. Because i got some consumer uh, desktops that we're going to use for hypervisors. But you know the kernels are the same as Windows Server 2016. So you're just going to go into Windows features on Windows 10, and we're going to enable Hyper-V. So we're going to let this file finish copying over before we reboot this computer. And then once the ISO is on the computer, I'm going to restart this and we'll have Hyper-V services enabled. All right, so we got this thing rebooted and that ISO has been uh, copied over. So we're going to go into the start menu and go to Hyper-V manager. And we're going to create a new virtual machine. We want to store the virtual machine in a different location. By default, it goes to C, but we created those drive or those folders over on the D drive. So we're just going to go with generation one. All right, so we are not going to use dynamic memory for this. And I'm just going to give it 4,000. I haven't actually created a switch yet, so I'm going to leave it disconnected from a switch. And I'm going to put this into the VHD location. We're going to give it 40 gigs. And we're going to browse for that ISO. All right, now the virtual machine's created. We double click on it and click start. This is going to be my first installation of Server 2022. All right, so while we wait on this to finish, let's set up a virtual switch. We go to our virtual switch manager. We're going to create a new external switch. We're going to allow the management operating system to share this. And we're going to enable VLAN ID on the management operating system. All right, so we enabled the virtual LAN tag for the host and what we had to do to get that to actually work is to update the native VLAN on this port to be the default port link, and then I added management to the allowed VLANs. So it's actually gonna tag that traffic. We're gonna go in here to the network adapter, drop it to our FGL switch. So we're gonna tag this VM with 107. And while we wait on that, let's set up policy that will let that get out to the internet. We'll run through and we'll do a basic configuration.
Alright, so we're going to let this thing install updates. It actually looks pretty similar to Server 2016 and Server 2019. Um, so on the next video, we'll go ahead after this thing's fully updated and we'll install the main controller role on it. Uh, I hope this has been informative for you. Uh, I look forward to seeing you in the next video.